In 2021, a fresh perspective on educational support to St. Lucians came by way of a series of policies by government to maximize on interventions to enable its citizens to receive their education regardless of status or background. These policies would add to those already solidified in the education landscape, such as the Book Bursary Program, the Education Access Fund, which provides a 500 EC dollar one-time payment to new entrants into secondary school, and the School Feeding Program. According to Education Minister Honorable Sean Edward, government felt that it was extremely important to introduce general support initiatives that would remove the financial burden of parents and give their children a fighting chance at school. The package of general support included the payment of yearly facility fees for every student attending government primary and secondary schools on the island, as well as the payments of CXC, CSEC mathematics and English for all Form 5 students attending a government secondary school. The Prime Minister has given a commitment that incrementally we will be paying for more subjects and that by the end of this term in government, the government would have absorbed CXC fees for, Mr. Speaker, quite a few of, of the parents, if not all the students in our secondary school system. Teachers are not to be forgotten as government approved the increase of the teacher material assistance. This demonstrates our commitment to the teachers and the educators of our country. I taught for more than a decade, and I know teachers every single time they travel, particularly those who vacation in the United States, Mr. Speaker. Before they are able to buy a pair of shoes or buy a dress for themselves, their suitcases, is all, their suitcases are already half packed with teaching materials to enable the students who would be interested in their care, in their care at um, the commencement of the academic year. So this increase, Mr. Speaker, this increase in allowances for the teachers to allow them to procure materials for better lesson delivery is something that we welcome. Government's higher education support has also been widespread Support to disadvantaged students enrolled with the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College continued with the SALCC Bursary Initiative. Government to that added more opportunities for young adults to pursue studies in varying areas of training overseas through the provision of many scholarships from existing and new partners such as Cuba, Taiwan, Morocco, the OAS, Hungary, South Korea and Monroe College, to name a few. Minister Edward, who is spearheading government's policies in education, believes a new one scholarship per household initiative of government will not just strengthen the island's workforce, but also help realize the dreams of many families. The first generation scholarship program is for individuals who are the first in their families to attend university. Mr. Speaker, there are people in this country. They are brilliant young St. Lucians, Mr. Speaker, who come from families where nobody has been exposed to university education. And in quite a few instances, the young people are demonstrating that they have the aptitude, they have the intellect, they have the discipline, they have the tenacity, they have what it takes. But because their parents do not own a square foot of land, because they have no surety, they have no collateral. They have no money in the bank, Mr. Speaker. Notwithstanding that they would have been top from kindergarten all the way to secondary school and post-secondary, but because they don't have the means to go to the bank, Mr. Speaker, they languish and they watch children whom they would have beaten and done better than at school go to university, get big jobs, and because of their circumstances, Mr. Speaker, they are relegated to bystanders in society. This first generation program is correcting that problem in our country. Educational support would not be complete without the reinstatement of the One Laptop Per Child initiative, which was decommissioned by the former administration. Over the last two years, 
the resurgence of the program has brought back a revival of laptop use by students, enabling them to engage in online instruction, research, and remote learning where necessary. The new line of laptops, armed with all the necessary software on a protected platform, is proving to outlast the prior issue of what has been deemed as inefficient and substandard learnbooks. Much has been said about the e-books versus the One Laptop Per Child program. Upon assuming office in 2021, an immediate act of our administration, Mr. Speaker, was to move away from the disaster of what is commonly referred to as the e-book program and reinstate the well-loaded One Laptop Per Child initiative. Mr. Speaker, this action was not taken because we were being spiteful and wish to do away with a project because it was rolled out by the previous administration. But rather, Mr. Speaker, because we are convinced that the current approach is more sustainable and will evoke a greater sense of national pride than the continuous repatriation of funds to foreign companies in the name or under the guise of license fees. Added to this, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that the e-books or learn books, the learn books, Mr. Speaker, were not being utilized and the device itself was not durable. It was faulty. It was flimsy, Mr. Speaker. We are now developing our own content for our secondary school students. And the amount that it is costing us, Mr. Speaker, is, a, is almost insignificant compared to the millions of dollars we were paying an external entity in the form of license fees. Mr. Speaker, we have been able to redirect some of the monies that were paid as license fees to provide scholarship opportunities for young St. Lucians who are desirous of having a university education.